Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, one more time. Good morning. Good morning for a third time. Good morning. All right. Thank you. Uh, I just like to say thank you to Reverend Smith for approving me, and thank you for Trevon for suggesting me to be able to give the message for this morning. And today's message basically is just going with God one step at a time. Amen. Now, going with God one step at a time is many different ways that we could tackle this topic. But for me, I like to take it from the angle of just embracing the journey. What it means to actually walk with God and not just focusing on the end goal. You know, I saw, Arab, I saw all of us. I don't think none of us really want to see them fiery, that fiery furnace, right? Raise your hand if you want to see that fiery furnace. You know, why you know raise your hand? Anyway, but yeah, all of us want to see those pretty gates one day. And as promised in First John, and as promised in First John chapter two verses twenty-five, and this is the pro and this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. So, we were placed on this earth, and we've been promised eternal life on the agenda of two things. For one, if you're a believer, if you believe in the word of the Lord. And not only if you believe, you don't get a participation trophy for just believing. For actually acting on what you know. For actually pushing the kingdom of the Father. You know what I mean? Imagine if you were a musician. Or let's say you was a lead singer. And you knew whether you performed well or whether you performed terrible. The crowd was still going to reward you anyway. What's the purpose of even performing? You might as well stay home. So, for me, it's about the purpose of our steps. And in making this sermon, I realized that in our steps, it's really only two purposes. You're either one escaping or you're pursuing. And this is the part where I give my testimony. Well, for me, um, growing up in high school, you know, back in the day, you know, 2019, but I can't really relate to y'all because that's probably like 30 years ago for y'all. But yeah, back in the day, when I was I was chubby, you know. I used to try out for a lot of teams in grade seven, I got cut off the team. Grade eight, I get cut off the team. Grade nine, I get cut off the team. Grade 10, I barely make the team. And then grade 12 game, and it was my senior season, you know, it was time to turn up. This is my last chance. And yeah, but I was always I was always the big kid, you know what I mean? I I could have barely run, I could have barely jumped over a phone book, but I made it work, you know? And grade 12 came, and I was someone, even though that a lot of you only see me, probably only see a smile and you only see my laughter, but I'm someone who I really take into consideration what people say about me a lot, you know? It used to really affect me. And for basketball, I never was the type to really crash out and put my hands on anyone. They said anything I didn't like, but basketball was that way of expressing how I felt. Like, yeah, you might have said something about me, but if I ever catch you on the court, like, I'm at your neck for the entire game, you know? So, we had 12 came, and the season started off great. I played every game of the season, played the semifinals. At this point, we 11 and 1 going into the playoffs. I played in the semifinals, we doing great. I don't even care if I, I ain't starting, but I'm still, I have a big impact on the team. And then, the championship come. This one I tell him, my mommy, I tell him, hey, you know, bring the family, you know, the, the dogs, we need dogs to the game too. You know, this is about to be, this is about to be crazy, you know. And the game starts. So first quarter, I ready to take take this warm-up off anytime. I ready to get going. Okay, catching dust. All right, cool. Okay. Second quarter, I still ready to get going. You know, I catching dust. All right, so I guess the third quarter is my time. Man, I sit on that bench all the way up until the fourth quarter. And then with one minute left, you know, we finally have a big lead. I think I'm able to get in. I look at my coach. My coach acting like he can't see me. I said, okay, cool. So I was, I, and, it, and, it, and it's crazy because we won the game. You know, it was a series. And then the very next game, we won again. And... It was a moment where I should have been celebrating, you know, and on the service, I looked like I was celebrating. But it's crazy how when you spend so much time escaping on the inside, I still felt like that fat kid with low self-esteem. 
you know. And even my mother, even now, I saw you remember when you put the phone inside my face after the game. And I was like, why are you recording me? Bam, I stopped the phone and me on. Boy, that's the last thing I, I should ever do. So I was just really hurt. But I never really understood that when you're escaping, you're pushed by the fear of what you was in the past, you know? And the difference between escaping and pursuing is when, when you're escaping, you keep looking in your rear view mirror, not knowing that you still have to drive, you know? Not knowing that it's people inside the car with you who exclude you still have to be a pillar of strength for, who you still have to uplift, who still look to you, you know? And I just remember, I'll always remember when I was, when I was like, one, one, like a couple of days after that championship run, I kept having this dream that I was just in an empty arena. And I hit my first shot. I hit my first shot and I couldn't, I couldn't see no one. I only could have seen was lights, cameras, action. It was like a dream for every ball player, this is what he was wishing for. And took another shot, air ball. Take another shot. And you know when them dreams on you, boy, you can't do nothing inside there. You airballing, watching everyone walk out on me, you know? And then I kept hearing this one clapping in the back. This one, this one clapping in the back. And it's crazy. I never knew who this was. Because in my mind, it was only that one person who probably was still rooting for me to fail. But fast forward, I'll get back to that. Fast forward, I go to UB. My first semester, I gone from, my C, I was like around 205, 203 pounds. By the end of that first semester, I took all that pain and that anger and I turned myself into like, I was 167 pounds. That's the lowest I've ever been. And it might, trust me, and it's something that we might clap about, you guys might clap about, but what I realized is that the difference between escaping and pursuing is all based on your intention. You know, when I think back to that dream now, the one person who was actually clapping for me, and when I think about every rep and every drill that my legs was giving out and I couldn't, I could barely get my arms up and I had no lift under my shot, I really was thinking that it's really those same voices and what people saying that kept me going. And I really thought that I was on this earth to prove others wrong and I was on this earth to just show people that I'm more than enough. But in reality, if it wasn't for the strength of God, if it wasn't for the strength and for the righteousness that he gave me to know that I'm more than that, I would have never, I would have never took the opportunity to even change myself. You know, but at least for me, it was lucky that I still had something positive there to still catch myself even though I was so driven by such a, such a meaningless motive. But what about others, you know? It's people out there losing their house. People out there losing their loved ones. You know? And in turn, instead of running to God and putting their trust in God, you, some of them only could put their trust inside a bottle. Could put their trust inside a joint. I'll put nature society something that doesn't have any good for them. Like I said, and like I said, if it's one thing that you don't remember, is if you, that you, that if you do remember from anything I said at the service, you spend so much time looking in the past and looking in your rear view mirror, you still forget that you have to drive. You know? So, I'd like to give you a scripture from John chapter 14. Verses, John chapter 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. We were put on this earth, and the biggest thing that I realized about escaping versus pursuing is that you realize that you pursue when you understand that there's something out there bigger than yourself when you realize that pushing the kingdom of God is way bigger than you would ever do. Anything you could ever do on this earth. You know, you spend so much time looking back at these small issues that you were probably already passed and you already yeah. got over. Uh -huh. But you don't realize that we was put on this earth to push an agenda, 
as Christians. It's our oath to spread the word everywhere until our last breath. You know, and when you take on and when you absorb such anger and so much hurt and so much turmoil, how could you ever do that? You only pursue when you learn how to stop escaping. Man, I need some water. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 16. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has been conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, it gives birth to death. By not understanding that, by not understanding the agenda that we have here, and by allowing what we the meaningless things that we face on this earth to drive us and drive us day by day, sooner or later, instead of listening to the plight of God, we listen to the plight of our own desires and our own needs. And just like how verse 15 says, then after has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. It's only a destructive path that we lean ourselves down. But it wasn't until I was able, and even though I love doing this and I love speaking here, it really made me appreciate uh, what Mr. Pinder, you know, all, everyone who came over here to speak did before me. Because I can this soul searching thing before every sermon, I can't keep doing this. But, and me understanding this thing about basketball and my actual desire, it hurts because I really thought that this thing was for me. But when you realize that your own agendas and everything that you have and everything that you've been looking for, it isn't for the right things, it's painful. But at least we have a father out there who loves us every time. Like I said, even though I was doing it for the wrong reasons, the only person who was in that gym with me, the only person who was in the court, who was on the court with me when no one else was, even, if, even though I was there for the wrong reasons, was the same man who had with me right now. So, with that being said, I just want everyone to understand that we have been put on this earth for a mission. It's way bigger than us, and I pray that if it's one thing that you take away from this sermon is that we could all be way bigger than what we've come through. Thank you.